Welcome everyone to a new gameplay series on Rule the Waves. In this series we will be playing as Italy. Uh, hopefully we'll do a lot better than my previous series where we just happened to get our butt kicked by everyone pretty much, but mostly France and the, the United States while we were playing as the Royal Navy. Um, that was kind of a disaster. I did some thinking about that and I, I believe the only way you can have a really successful campaign as the Royal Navy is if you choose the historical naval budget. Because what the game naval budget does is it really shrinks the gap between everyone. But it doesn't redistribute the colonies to make, you know, your... Uh, I mean, the Great Britain has so many colonies that when you reduce their overall budget, you're basically decreasing the value of every one of their individual colonies, but you're not decreasing the amount of ships that you still need to protect those. So you, you really diminish the British power um, by playing under the game naval budget. So if I was to go back and do it again, I may even one day go back and play Great Britain again. It would be fun to play with the historical naval budget because they are a powerhouse in a lot of ways. So it's, it's surprising that we did so poorly. I mean, it's the only game, the only series, the only campaign that I've ever lost in Rule the Waves, aside from a, a test game, which I, I wouldn't really count. Um, but that was off camera anyways. It's definitely the only series on camera that I've lost even playing as the Confederate States of America and only buying submarines, I, I played better than as the Royal Navy, which it doesn't make sense, right? So I think we, if we'd go back and did it with historical budget, we'd see a much different result. Now, that said, Italy only has two sea zones that we have to occupy. So this means we're in an immensely better situation than the Royal Navy. It's also gonna make the micromanagement so much easier. Having only two sea zones to patrol to distribute your forces between just means a lot less micromanagement on camera, and I think it'll make for a much more entertaining series. Just about in every way, I'm very excited about this series. Now, to put a little hitch in our get up, I'm not going to be using the game naval budget. I'm going to go ahead and use the historical naval budget. And while um, basically what naval budget, the difference between these two modes is on average decreasing a nation's um, budget by a factor of two. We can see this happens exactly for France, for Russia, for Austria-Hungary, um, Austro Austro-Hungarian. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to say it that way. And it also happens that way for Japan. The United States doesn't get reduced by very much at all. And Germany gets reduced by more than half. But those are the exceptions, and if you average over all circumstances, Generally, the difference is that um, the game budget is twice as high as the historical budget. And that's why not changing the naval budget at all for the Royal Navy hinders them even more because everyone else is gaining double the budget and your budget isn't changing at all. So it's the only one that doesn't change. Everyone else has an increase when they go to historical, I mean, um, when they go to game. So it's a huge, huge negative for playing I think that the naval budget, game naval budget, was based on the player not playing as Great Britain to allow them to fight Great Britain. Because um, I'm not sure if the computer really has to take advantage of foreign stations the same way the player does. I, I don't know these things, this is all speculation, but it's uh, food for thought. I mean, we can maybe discuss it on the forum or in the Discord or something, but... Okay, um, so Italy. What we're playing is Italy. Now, I'm going to be doing historical naval budget, and the reason why I talked a lot about this is because Italy actually suffer, suffers the worst in terms of differences between game and naval. I mean, game and historical. We have almost a three times reduction, and the next highest reduction is Germany's, which is just slightly over half. It's not even two and a half. It's slightly under that, like 2.3 or something. I don't know. Um, wait, is it just 2.25? I think it is just 2.25. Yeah, it's just 2.25. And now this is not quite three, but it's, you know, 2.8. <laughs> so the reduction here is huge. It's just huge. Um, we're still gonna do it because I think with two C zones, we'll be okay. We also have the characteristics of being cautious. I think what this has a role on some events, like the events that your ministers will send you, um, I think that they're more likely to, um, you're, you're more likely, I think, to get prestige hits, or is that for Bombastic Head of State? I actually don't remember what Cautious does. Poor education affects our technology, so we'll have a little bit worse technology, which is 
Okay, uh, we'll deal with it. Inconsistent neighbor policy means our budget will fluctuate a lot more. And some corruption, I believe this means that our budget will take hits due to corruption. So in general, they, they have very, very poor uh, statistics. I think maybe the only worse one is Russia with poor education and underdeveloped or undeveloped shipbuilding industry, which is pretty bad. It increases the, the time it takes for ships to be built. So that's not good. And we do, uh, Russia has a very poor technology bonus, and at least we get ship design, which is obviously a hugely important category. We also get triple turrets. You can safely ne neglect motor torpedo boats. I don't ever use them, and I don't, they weren't even implemented into the game un until maybe like 1.33, so it took a while for them to even enter the game, and I don't think that they have much of an impact. We actually have, at the start of the game, very good technology. We have 15,000 size docked, docks, which is second only to the United States and to Great Britain, who both have 16,000. Wait, no, you have 14,000. Who has 16? Oh, France, sorry. Um, so we're doing good in dock size, and we also have the best naval guns available. I disregard the 13-inch guns that the Royal Navy has because they're quality negative two, so they're really terrible. Okay, so that all said, let's, <laughs> let's get into the game itself, right? Tortuga very large, and we will play with historical resources. We'll do our own legacy build. Um, one thing I was thinking about is slowing down the research rate again, but I'm just gonna leave it as is so that we can build some nice end game ships by the time 1925 comes around. And you can see I've cleared game three for us. So it's time to build our initial fleet. Good, let's get to it. By the way, I am using a new interface, um, a new capture uh, mode, I guess. It's not. It's basically the same mode, but I'm doing it on a different monitor, and I'm trying to make some improvements to the way this all works. Um, I'm putting a nice little background, which you might recognize as just being GIMP. <laughs> so I'm putting something so that there's not... Um, it's just a very neutral background, which hopefully is not too distracting. Uh, anyway, just that's the side. But. So our first ship, we will build our battleship, and we'll have it auto-designed, auto but I think... I already have an idea about what I want to do with this. We're going to push it right up to the, wait, the heck, 15. We can't build this. One thing we could do is actually have Great Britain build a 16,000 version for us. And I think, you know what, let's do that. Is it worth building a speed of 18 or 19? Well, that's a pretty sizable difference. 400 tons on a 16,000 ton ship. So I think we'll even stick these at 18. I don't really care about the speed. I'd much rather very strong belt protection, especially because this speed ends up paying, um, I mean, you end up paying for that in terms of higher maintenance costs, as well as just, you know, the tonnage increase. So my idea with this first battleship is to make, we'll, we'll make kind of like a, a very strong, uh, like what's the word I'm trying to say? What's the, what is it that I'm trying to, I want this to be a very defensive battleship which means very strong armor. That's the word. And I'm going to put deck extended of two, even though I might leave it at one in the end, but I just don't like the fact that splinters penetrate then. But still, the deck extended is... Uh, it's not covering the valuables of the ship anyway. I just... It's not very much to get that. The strange thing is, I don't think I'm even going to put deck up to 2.5. I'm just going to leave it at two, since the deck is really not used. You don't really have any hits scored against the deck for a very long time, until, you know, at least past 1910. So we'll do conning tower 11 as well, turrets 11, turret top 2.5, and take those secondaries down to two. So looking good so far, we can even do a short range ship, which I feel like it will be nice to get a bunch of these that are just behemoths. And we could even do 2.5. Let's do four. I really want to stop all belt penetration, because remember, one way for these battleships to lose is just being shot to Swiss cheese, even by lower caliber shells. So by increasing our extended belt, which is the one that goes all the way around the ship, the belt just covers like the main uh, important parts of the ship. But the extended belt is going to help us a lot. So we'll probably do that. Let's get everything up to 11.5. We're doing good on... I mean, we're doing really well. Let's just increase this to 9 guns per side. And we can actually take away these tertiaries, because I don't... It's not a bad idea to have tertiary guns, 3-inch... I'm just going to not have them in favor of more 6-inch guns, though. 
because this is a this is looking like a damn good ship if I may say so myself. In fact, what if we drop this down to only nine guns and uh, we probably need more ammo? But how much? How far away? How much of a oh oh gosh, it's so close. I think that we are going to go for only 11 inch turrets in order to get this done. With only two turrets, we don't have as many spots as you know. There's not as many turret area versus deck area that the turrets can be. I mean, what I'm trying to say is with with less turrets, you have less turrets that can be hit. <laughs> it's the very common sense thing. You know, I only have two turrets, so there's not a whole lot of turrets that can be hit, but the belt is going to be uh, hit very frequently. So these turrets will probably be ineffective some of the time, but I'm okay with it. I'm going to roll the dice and have a higher belt to have more protracted, uh, hopefully we can survive more protracted engagements. So this is a pretty nice ship. I'm pretty happy about it. I don't think we need, in fact, two sets of torpedoes. Let's just have one. These are not. These are only be going to be used to like finish ships off. Does that allow us to get back up to 11.5? It does. Ah, oh. we're really in it. If we lower this, can we get? Ah, oh, we just can't. Hmm. We'd have to lower it again. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like this. 120 rounds per gun is not my ideal. I would have preferred 125. But kind of the good news is rate of fire is so bad in the very beginning of the game that we'll be hard-pressed to fire off all, all 120 rounds. Although at the same time, the engagements in this time frame are so close and they do last for a long time if you want to actually sink a ship. So what can we do to get those? I, I mean, I could take this down, but I don't want to. Okay, let's take this down to 3.5, which is going to give us, well, like a lot. <laughs> okay, well, hmm. We could leave a little bit of space, which will just allow better fire control without having to readjust anything. So we'll go up to 12 for the conning tower since it's the only thing we really can do. We can go up to 3 on the turret top. That's fine. That makes sense. I, I always It always makes sense to me that your turret top is half of an inch more than your deck. So we'll do this, and hey, we can, nope, can't go up any higher there. Yeah, I'm fine with this. Okay, so is this going to be called the Italia class? Well, no, we have our supporters, thankfully, who can change the name, although I don't mind the Italia class. The fact that it's being built um, in Great Britain means that I don't think it should be called the Italia class. <laughs> we'll probably call the next ship, though, the Italia class, because I really like that name. Um, but this first one is going to be the Africanus class. Um, thank you uh, to all the people who submitted names, by the way. You'll see these names appearing. Okay, that's... Uh, I think that's everything. I'm not missing anything obvious, right? I don't think so. I'll hear about it in the comments if I have. Okay, we'll skip that. Um, well, I guess we can build one, right? Now let's design our next one, which is going to be a armored cruiser. I know I've really given armored cruisers a, a tough run of it in the past. They are not very effective. They are not very effective, but that's outside of the beginning of the game. Basically, battle cruisers will come and they'll stomp them all out, but until that happens, I still find them very useful. So we want a king of the seas type armored cruiser because these will get into battles with other armored cruisers pretty frequently. Which means that even if I build less of them because they're more expensive individually, the one-on-one -on -one fights will win. And that is going to be our our game plan. So let's go for 1, 2.5, 2, 1, 6, I like that. 5, that's fine actually. To a top 2.5, secondary is 2. Looking good. We want probably 9-inch guns. Secondaries at 6 inches and a lot of them. Hmm can only get seven right now. Let's upgrade this, update the graphics. Okay, that's because we have a lot of tertiaries. Those are not necessary. Wow, we actually start with quality one. Three inch guns. Okay, this is important. Let's just figure out. We have quality zero set. Ah, shoot, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot, unfortunately, to bring up my ship firing rate. <clears throat> this is the important thing where we have to do. I might even put a cut in this video just so I can do this because 
Uh, I need to reference the ship firing. I think 9 and 10 inches are at the same rate of fire, but I, I can't remember. I know for penetration, 8 and 9 are about the same, but the problem is that 8, you get some kind of penalty, rate of fire penalty, if they're less than 9 inches. So 10 inches seems to be the way to go. Let's go for this. I, I think I'm just going to commit to 10 inch guns. I think that they're not firing any slower. And I'll just have to eat my words if that's wrong. I'm pretty happy with this ship so far. Eight six inch guns per side, two 10 inch guns. Uh, let's see, this is 48406. This is 48406. So 48 and four goes to 47 and three nine. 10,000 versus 10,000, oh my gosh, what the heck? You're really making me think that, I mean, that's 400 yards difference. You're really making me think the nine inch guns are better. This doesn't tell the whole story. Of course, 10 inch guns are just gonna do more damage than nine inch guns. But I wish I had the rate of fire information and I'm really kicking myself for not having looked it up, but we're just gonna make a decision and go with it. I think we'll just stick with nine inch guns. All right, let's stick with 10 inch guns. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. 10 inch guns it is. Now we have a little bit of weight left. Maybe it's better off we just decrease that. Because this is already gonna be, I would say, the queen of the seas. Anything else we really need? I don't think so. Yeah, it's too expensive to get that up or that. I'm pretty happy with those numbers. Five is a good number. You'll see ones that are more heavily armored, but I believe we can probably win engagements even with just five instead of 5.5. Unless I just really want to make these super expensive. No, I think we're okay, because we're, well, I mean, another thing I could consider doing is adding another knot of speed. I'm gonna leave it as is. I think it's a decent enough ship. Okay, so we'll save this and we'll, no, don't name it the Marco Polo. <laughs> well, I'm actually gonna open the design and delete it. Okay, and now let's call this what it should be, which is the, I'm gonna have to copy and paste this in. <laughs> it's even hard to figure out what this is. Um, oh, never mind. I, never, I was looking at the wrong line. The Etna class. Save that. So the Etna class armored cruiser. We'll get one of those as well. Now light cruisers. Well, we've really gone back and forth on what these light cruisers should be. I've, I've just, I think I've covered all the potential options. And this is not going to look like this. <sighs> what do we want to do with these? What in the end did we decide? We decided that raiding CLs are not effective, so we will not be going for that. Now, I think you can still do six inch guns, two, two, five. This is gonna keep um, the, I should say the two inch deck is gonna keep these relevant for longer. Let's do 2.52. We don't need secondaries, we'll take those away. And now let's just try to add as many of these as we can. And we will want to add a lot of them. Um, do that. How's that look? One, two, three, four, five. I guess we'll add another pair close to the front. Okay, looks good to me. What we could do is add this pair, take off the middle and add another one, but I like kind of the aggressive, our guns are more forward than back. Uh, it shows that the Italians are gonna be moving forward and being aggressive. So that's the design intentionally. We can get this for 6,000. I don't think we need the extra torpedoes but these are gonna be my, out of all the ships in the beginning, the ones who probably launch torpedoes the most. So I'm not even understanding why this ship is costing so little in terms of tonnage. 22 knots is exactly where we want them to be. I think it's pretty much impossible to get 23 knots and I don't think it's worthwhile because they'll be significantly more expensive. So let's just drop this down until, well, there it is. Oh, wait, of course rounds per gun. Well, can we get 
Well, if we can get 160, I guess this is just how it's going to be. The Toronto class? No. It is going to be the... This is the one I was looking at. The Corsia Reale. <laughs> I hope I said that right. Italian's not going to be as bad for me as uh, French for sure, but um, neither am I going to be perfect with it. Okay, so we'll leave that. The Corsia Reale class. And... Is there anything I'm missing? Coal, medium. Yeah. I think that that's just fine. Yep. Hope so. I mean, I, I usually miss something, but again, people in the comments can point it out to me, and then we'll take like, some emergency damage control measures. Okay, last but not least, we have our destroyers. Well, they aren't last, but they are probably least. The minesweepers will do next, and those are probably more valuable than our initial destroyers. This is really just for fun. We'll be creating a destroyer class, but um, they won't be doing much. In fact, what the heck? Okay, I love this design. I love it because it has four torpedoes. I don't think it can exist, but we'll see if it can somehow. Uh, speed. Short range. We've done it. Not only have we done it, we're going to give ourselves a lot more ammunition. Ah, well. I guess <laughs> not that much more ammunition. Ah, see, this is strange. We did not have a heavy, crowded, something affecting our, our uh, turrets before. And now we do. But this is still fine. It's going to give us an opportunity. So we're going to have to clear these mounts. We'll probably not use D and E. We'll probably use the ones further back. And then uh, V looks good, though. So uh, let's use these two and V. That looks good. And do we have centerline crowning? We should not anymore. We don't. And we can increase the speed to 29? No, don't think so. Hmm. Will we go 28? Can we get away with medium then? No. No, no, no. Definitely not. Well, we're going to have to drop this. I don't think we need this much ammunition. It's kind of a, in my opinion, a waste. Yeah, 215 is going to be fine for them. So they're just going to be underweight then, which is bizarre. There's probably a way we can figure out, like, do they need this then? Yeah, they do. It's very inefficient. I guess we could increase their guns to size 4, but that doesn't really make sense considering, well, we are pretty happy having quality 1-inch guns. I mean, quality 1 guns. What if I do something crazy? What if we delete this turret? Can we add 1 and 2? No. Okay, so we just have to do it this way, I guess. All right, well, it should be a cheaper ship because it's underweight. But I, I honestly don't see any improvement that we could make. I mean, I guess we could add... This would be a little bit bizarre, but could we add... Huh. We could conceivably get away with this. There's no reason why we would do this. It is only going to be useful at taking out other destroyers. And I think that the extra cost of doing this is not worth it. Wait. Okay, I was going to say, can we get away with an unbalanced ship? <laughs> it would be kind of strategically, or I should say tactically interesting to try to use one with a, a you know, a strange design like that. But let's, okay, so let's just call this a, a ship. I don't like this name. Is that the best one? It, Sparrow, Turbine. Let's leave the Turbine for a different class because uh, a Sparrow, Hope, I believe. I'm not sure. That's what I, Esperanza would be hope in Spanish, I think. Um, so maybe it's something like hope, who knows. And that, that's a good name for a destroyer this early in the war, because <laughs> all it has is hope. <laughs> okay, let's save this one. Nothing else we need to worry about. And we'll build one of those as well. So we have not very much money. Ah. So let's basically just build one more battleship 
And the reason why we have to build one more is because we need one which is built in the local yards. If I'm not mistaken, I just want to hopefully recall that this was built, yeah, in Great Britain. So we clear all, we design one more, and this has to be a 15,000 ton ship because we will be building it in our local yard. So I don't mind, this is going to be uh, what I presume. I presume this will be our legacy battleship, which will stick around for like invasion chances and such stuff like that later in the war. So I don't even mind if this is not that great of a ship. It just has to be, uh, it has to be able to hold its own, I guess. It's really all it has to do. So we'll take some, these guns, the six inch guns are gonna be the most important part of it, in fact, because that helps it against secondary ships. And to that measure, I guess deck extended should be two as well. But I don't mind if it's down to three, nine here. Well, let's make it 10. We're way over, but that's because this is happening. Yeah, that was a huge change. We can go down to 2.5 on the top turret. Actually, having them a little bit higher would make more sense because if this is a ship which is gonna stand the test of time, deck becomes more important. Um, then we'll just try to get this up as much as we can, 9.5. That's still not high enough if I have to be completely honest. Yeah, we're still a little bit. Okay, we'll do 9.5 in order to be able to get 10, 10. That's fine, 3, 2.5, 2, 2, 2, 2, 10. This has to go up, 120. I think that's good, medium. I want this one to be medium so it can move around because this is gonna be the one that doesn't just hang out in the Mediterranean. Uh, we also don't want Camper Down. I didn't even think that that was a real name. Um, I think this will be the Italia class. It's kind of weird. Maybe I could make this a different one though. I know what I'll do. I'll make this the Regulus class because it's it's gonna stick around for a long time, but um, it's not, I don't wanna give it like an amazing glorious name, like the Italia. We should save that, save that for something that we can be a little more proud of. <laughs> okay, double checking, I think everything is fine on this. Yeah, it's not a bad ship, it's really not. Now the rest of our money is going to be go, is going to go, well, first Minesweeper, okay. We have the Silly Minesweeper. It has been pointed out to me, by the way, um, that you can actually decrease. The speed does not change, nothing changes until 15. So you can go down to 14 to get even less maintenance to pay on these. I don't know actually if it effectively, this would be a good experiment if somebody has the time to do it. Because the maintenance on these is already, already like 3000 or something. Does a size 14 take it down to, um, does it take it down to 2500 or 2000? I don't know. Obviously we just want two three inch guns on this thing. This is fine. It is gonna be, well, medium's fine. Speed would be fine. Actually, I think we can just get away with normal. Yeah, but I'm gonna do one. I don't think we do deck, but we do turret and turret top at one. Yeah, we can do this. It's kind of silly, but <laughs> we can actually get away with it. Okay. So this is our really cheap class. In fact, if we do this, yeah, you can see that you don't, you can get away with 17 and just nothing changes between 15 and seven. Well, wait. Oh, is it 15 that costs less? Well, anyway, 17 is still the same, still within our weight remaining amount. So I'm gonna do, this is just the standard design that I've been using for a very long time. So we'll continue to use this because I don't, I don't know why we would do anything else. How much would it cost, by the way, to get the deck? Yeah, way too much. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. The minimum I think you can do is uh, one. You can't do 0 0.5 inches of armor. So I guess 0 0.5 and zero are essentially the same because you need steel there anyway. <laughs> so I guess zero is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, let's get one of those. Just to, so we have one of everything built. And now we just want to get as many of these as we can, which is really not gonna be very many, despite the fact that we're on very large. I did very large, right? This seems insanely small, my budget. And we wanna get the Africanus. Gosh, I can't even build two of them. All right, we can look at the maintenance cost here. So it's 5,000 for this darn Minesweeper. I wonder if it would have been 4,000 if I had done the speed of 15, in which case I should have done it. 
Um, 11,000 for our destroyers, not bad. 24, 245,000 for this one. 226,000, a lot cheaper for the other one, which is nice, that'll help us late. And all under 200,000 for our armored cruiser. That's a really good number. I'm, I'm pretty happy about all those numbers. Okay, so we'll get one more of these. And this will be, let's see. Here we go, the uh, Marcius Agrippa. There it is. Okay, um, looking good so far. Well, as good as a fleet can look with only three ships built. And we actually have to get around, what, what's the amount that we need? 24,000, 24 million, I should say. So we have to get this down to 24 million. How much do our armored cruisers cost? Because I would want another one. Yikes. I want to stay as close to 24 million as possible. So this is not an option. Well, that's gonna pretty much hit the nose on the head, isn't it? It's gonna take us down to 24 and some change. We'll get like a minesweeper, which is cheap. Okay, so let's get one of these. This is going to be... I won't generally name things on camera. I'm only gonna do it for this first video. And then every video after this, at the end of the episode, after I finish recording, I'll go back and change all the names um, for the new new stuff we're building. But I know we had, did I, I, I damn it. Didn't put it here. Uh, yeah, actually we can do this. This one is fine. We'll make this the Pompey Magnus. Our legacy fleet. Okay, that takes us, yep, just right above 24 million, so we'll get one more Minesweeper, and I don't care to name the Minesweepers, so whatever they want. And there we go. Continue to the next. Here we just want to build basically a lot of battleships, and unfortunately we're not going to get very many, but we'll get as many as we can. And they're going to be unfortunately built from um, Great Britain, but luckily they're halfway built by the time we get them, so it shouldn't be as big of a deal. How, how, can we stomach three? Barely. That's probably the last one we can get. Okay, well, there it is. So that's our fleet. <laughs> and I think we're ready to start the game. Um, let's use a little bit of this money for a dock size increase. That's what I could have done instead of, instead of building a second minesweeper. You know, actually, we're going to need um, the minesweepers anyway. It doesn't really matter to me to get them at half cost, but they'll be built fast enough that they won't really impact the monthly budget too much. Let's just get four more to start. Uh, okay, good. Uh, we also have to pick the locations for these. So I, I know I've been running this entire thing so far with the window not fully. Hopefully that didn't annoy too many people. That's something I'll be setting up right as I start recording in the future, but I didn't get it set up because remember the very first pop-up in this to start a new game is a different window than this, the actual game you're playing. So there's so many different windows, it uh, does not interact very well with your recording software. Now, what do we need? We just need some in the Indian Ocean. I'm just going to naively, let's see. I'm gonna get my Etna to go over there. Indian Ocean, which I hope is enough to satisfy foreign tonnage. I have no idea what our foreign tonnage demands are here. What, four squaremen, zero? Well, in that case, come on back. Because <laughs> you do pay higher maintenance. Did it show it there? Let me look. Yeah, so it's 237, and it'll drop back down to 198 when we're back in the Mediterranean. So you want to keep as many forces as you can in your home waters, not just to protect yourself from blockade, but it's cheaper to do that. Okay, I think we're all set here. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much more because... Then we're gonna run into monthly balance issues like four, five months down the road. So let's just continue. We're not building that many, unfortunately, but hmm. Okay, well, it, it had to be done. Wow, so we got unlucky with this one, 16 months, but okay, that's fine. And we're gonna obviously wanna build up a lot of cheap ships. Let's see what everyone else is at to be, so we can be mocked by the, like, this is just, <laughs> this is 
insulting. I mean, our biggest threat is going to be Austria-Hungary. So it's nice that we at least have three compared to two there. But our next biggest threat is probably France, and we're three to five there, one to six, which is terrible. Oh, man, and just decimated in every way. This is not good. We have the same budget as Austria-Hungary and Japan, which is not in the game, so I guess that doesn't matter. And I believe Russia has a budget of 16 million, so they're over 50% higher. Well, we can see here. They're 50% higher than us. Germany is also 50% higher. France should be slightly... Wait, are they? No, they're actually 50% higher as well. 16 million, 16 million. I think this one's 16 million as well. Could be wrong. And France, I don't remember what they're... No, yeah, 16, 16, 16, 16. Who knows? Doesn't matter. <laughs> 24 million for the USA. They're going to be pretty strong. But Great Britain, obviously the strongest because they're at their full 40 million. So now that we're here, we can do our training don't need to do training yet. We're going to wait. We're going to leave our troops or our sailors not well trained. Just hoping we're not getting into war at first. We're going to do high intel effort against the Austro-Hungarians because I want to go to war with them first. That We want a good war result right away. So we definitely have a good chance of defeating them. And then I'll increase the intel effort. That's the only person I'm going to have intel with. And then I'll increase the intel with other nations probably as technology starts to get ahead. So hopefully we can steal some technology, but I'll just leave it as is for now. Speaking of technology, that's the last thing we need to do. Um, let's do naval guns on high, always. Fleet tactics on medium, explosive shells, medium, low, ASW, low, submarines. Uh, medium, medium, medium. Let's go on high for ship design, turrets and gun mountings. Probably high for that. Gonna leave this on medium, high for fire control. And I'm gonna leave the rest on medium. So I'm gonna do things a little bit different knowing that we don't have that much of a budget and we're very poor on research. So we're just gonna focus on a few strengths. We're gonna be very middle of the road on everything and maybe even a little bit behind. So at least we can get our budget up to 10%. Good thing I didn't forget to do that. Do we wanna build any forts or anything? I don't think so. We don't have that many sea zones anyway. So basically we live or die by our ships in the Mediterranean. Okay, so I think that's everything we want to do. I will click end turn once just to get us out of January. We can say that we advanced all of one month in this episode. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to call this first video to a close. So thanks so much for watching. Um, since this is the first video in the series, if you wouldn't mind pressing the like button, pressing the thumbs up, that would be helpful just to give some visibility to the series on YouTube. And I won't ask for this after the first video. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we have a good time with this series. I will post the ship list, the, sh the link to put your name on the potential ship list. Um, I'll do that in episode two. But uh, I just want to say right away that when you're thinking of your name, make sure that it has an Italian theme. As you can see here, we've done well. We have this Italian theme going on. Um, that's the, the, the goal always is if a person comes onto this series in the middle of it and they see the list of ship names that i have they aren't their immersion for potential italian ship names isn't lost so we shouldn't have like um, an american name here or uh, any it should be italian themed so keep that in mind but yeah thanks again and i'll catch you back for the next episode until then take care